bad news for fantasy owners today as wide receiver Kelvin Benjamin of the Carolina Panthers went down with a torn ACL this morning at the uh, joint team practices that the team was holding. Terrible, terrible news, obviously, for the Carolina Panthers and really bad news for fantasy owners. So what are we going to do now, guys? How does this affect things? Well, I'm going to talk about it today on this episode. Again, guys, my name is Nick Heron, and I am here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying these little updates that we're doing. If you are, make sure you hit that like button below, and of course, subscribe to this channel if you are new. So let's talk a little bit about Kelvin Benjamin. This is a guy who blew up as a wide receiver, is a rookie, and that is pretty rare. It's something that doesn't happen very often, although there were quite a few of rookie wide receivers who did have big years last year, and Kelvin Benjamin was certainly among them. Benjamin was, you know, he, he was somebody that used his giant frame, he's six foot five, to actually go down there and really make a lot of catches in the red zone. And that was his biggest value. He was a, a big time playmaker for the Panthers in the end zone, scored a lot of touchdowns, and he actually finished in seventh among all wide receivers last year in targets. So that is pretty damn impressive. That shows that Cam Newton had a lot of confidence in him as a rookie, despite the fact that the two of them really didn't have any sort of, you know, getting to know each other period prior to that. So uh, it's great that he was able to do such a great job. Unfortunately, now the Panthers are back in the same situation they were going into 2014. They really are very, very thin at wide receiver. Now they actually did go out there and pick up wide receiver Devin Funches in the draft, who's another very big body wide receiver that could potentially slip in and you know do something this year. But he was kind of expected to be the complimentary player to Kelvin Benjamin, where Benjamin's gonna be your wide receiver one, Funches is going to be a guy who you can't forget about and still put up decent numbers, you know, borderline fantasy numbers on a week-to-week -week basis. But, um, you know, now the Panthers are really going to have to start relying on Funches very, very quickly. I mean, this team is one of the thinnest teams in the league at wide receiver, if not the thinnest team in the league at wide receiver. They basically have nothing proven at all on the roster. That's a huge huge problem if you're a Cam Newton, Cam Newton owner as well. I mean, Cam Newton, obviously, the one of the big things that he is most known for is his, able, his ability to run the ball, and that really isn't going to change, I don't think. I mean, obviously, you would like to have the big-bodied receivers out there to block for you if you're Cam Newton, but I don't think that's really going to change things too much. What I will say, though, is that I do think his passing numbers will take a fairly substantial drop back, and that's why I'm moving Cam Newton down a couple of spots. I, I had him around 7th at quarterback. Now I'm moving him down to about the 8th, 9th, 10th range, depending on the league format. You know, if you're if you're in a, a league where the rushing touchdowns, for example, are the same as the passing touchdowns, so you got a six-point passing touchdown league, I don't think Cam Newton's really worth more than even like the 12th quarterback being drafted off the board because that advantage that he has over the other quarterbacks becomes narrower and narrower in those leagues. But at the same time, though, Cam Newton is, is really not the kind of quarterback, like I said, that you really expect him to go out there and throw for 30 touchdowns. So I don't think it's going to make him a player who you don't want as your fantasy starter, but there could be weeks where he struggles. I mean, that's kind of the life of owning a Cam Newton type player, but at the same time now, we're even looking at it being potentially more dramatic of an up and a down from a week to week basis. It could be very, very frustrating to own Cam Newton this year. So you might want to go out there if you get Cam Newton and, you know, follow it up with an Eli Manning, even a, a Jay Cutler, uh, you know, a, a, if he's available. I mean, it would be great to have Tom Brady as well. I know he's going way late in fantasy drafts right now. So uh, that type of player, Matt Stafford, uh, even a Sam Bradford, those kind of guys, Teddy Bridgewater, those kind of guys would be, I think, a good complimentary player for Cam Newton, just in case things don't start to happen at the beginning of the year for this team on offense. Now, a lot of people are also going to be asking the question, what happens to Jonathan Stewart running back for the Carolina Panthers? Well, my opinion is that his value doesn't really change a whole lot. Now, the team might actually start running the ball more, which you know, you would assume would make it so that Jonathan Stewart's value is going to go up. And I think on a, on a consistency standpoint, it might go up a little bit, but I think his high end value actually drops a little bit because wide receivers actually, a lot of people don't think about this, but they actually set defenses back a lot, especially big play receivers like Kelvin Benjamin. You know, you, you're, if you're a guy that can beat pretty much any quarterback, cornerback in one-on-one -on -one coverage, most teams are going to have to drop back their safeties to help over the top. Well, if you don't have many of those wide receivers, or if you've only got one in Funches that is really a guy that even might be able to do that kind of stuff, 
what are you gonna what are our defenses gonna do? They're gonna go out there and they're gonna stack the box and try and stop Jonathan Stewart. So despite the fact that they might run the ball more, his opportunities to break off big runs, to get into the end zone and you know score major fantasy points might actually be limited. So my opinion is that he's not really gonna change a whole lot for me. I think you kind of project him for similar type of numbers, uh, maybe slightly lower yards per carry with more attempts, if that makes sense, probably similar number of touchdowns. So I don't really think his value changes a whole lot. I mean, the big thing with Jonathan Stewart is if we know he's going to play for 16 games, he's absolutely going to be a fantasy starter for us, but we don't really have much confidence in that. He hasn't done it for a long, long time uh, where he's been consistent and healthy all year and, and a quality player. So it's hard to believe that it's going to happen this year. And that's why I'm not really changing Jonathan Stewart's ranking too much. Now, a couple other things to consider here. I do believe that you do have to move up Devin Funches. We talked a little bit about him. Like I said, he's a big body wide receiver. He's going undrafted in a lot of leagues. Now, if you're somebody that had Kelvin Benjamin on your team, you know, first of all, this is an example of a reason that you don't draft this early. Typically, my recommendation is we wait till after the third preseason game. Third preseason game is typically where most of the team starters are gonna play the, mo the most. They're very rarely gonna play in the fourth preseason game, so we don't really have to worry about that one too much. But after the third preseason game, we wanna make sure all of our guys are healthy and then we're gonna draft, right? So that's really my intention whenever I do fantasy drafts is I wanna make sure we get it after the third preseason game. Looking beyond that though, uh, without having Kelvin Benjamin on your roster now, let's say you did draft him and he is out for the season, like I said, um, you are going to be looking for somebody to potentially step in and take his place on your fantasy roster. And I think Devin Funches might be that kind of a guy. Now, I don't expect him to go out there and put up Kelvin Benjamin rookie type numbers because, like I said, that's kind of almost historic in a way. There are very few guys that go out and put up that kind of numbers. But Devin Funches is a guy that does have that high touchdown potential. He, like I said, being so big and strong and just without any other major targets in the offense besides Greg Olson, you're really looking at Devin Funches as being the wide receiver one on a team that could be pretty decent this year. I mean, I don't expect them to win the Super Bowl or anything, but they could be a, a solid team. And given the fact that they've got Cam Newton and Jonathan Stewart and everybody like that, with Greg Olson also uh, kind of emerging as a borderline elite tight end, you'd think their offense is going to be decent enough that Funches is going to have some opportunities to score some touchdowns this year. I do think it's going to be frustrating to own him some weeks. He might get two catches for 12 yards or something like that. Then there could also be weeks where he catches six passes for 115 yards and two touchdowns. You know, it's stuff like that that Devin Funches has the potential to do, the physical capability to do, which is something that I don't think anybody else on the roster does. Funches, like I said, is going undrafted in a lot of leagues currently. I do think you have to make him basically a borderline wide receiver four at this point. I, I actually have him in my top 50, which does make him a wide receiver four, but he's kind of, I think he's in the bottom half of the 40s. So, uh, you know, it, it kind of depends on your league and your scoring system and that kind of stuff. I don't expect him to go out there and make 90 catches. So in a PPR, I think he takes a little bit of a step back. Standard scoring leagues though, he's got decent touchdown potential, should be able to put up decent yardage. Could be a little bit frustrating to own, but I mean, given the fact that you're beyond your draft now, if you have if you have Kelvin Benjamin on your radar and he's on your roster, it sucks. There's not really a whole lot you can do. You gotta go out there and try and pick up the guys who are gonna help you the most. So I think, like I said, I would be looking at Devin Funches as an option. Um, some other guys that could potentially have gone undrafted in your league that you might wanna look at. Cody Latimer is a guy for the Denver Broncos who you could consider going out and picking up. I talked a little bit about uh, Marcus Wilson a couple of weeks ago or a couple of days ago for the uh, Chicago Bears. And he's somebody that could possibly also, you know, benefit from an injury to Kevin White on his own roster. So it's, it's guys like that that are late that are potentially going undrafted in a lot of leagues that you can go out there and get right now for free on free agency. Go ahead and drop Kelvin Benjamin unless you're in a dynasty league. And even in dynasty leagues, you gotta question what the value is for your league to have him on your bench the entire year. You know, uh, if you've got an IR spot, sure, go ahead and keep him and then, you know, decide what you wanna do next year. But you might need that IR spot throughout the year. So just think about it and uh, really consider what your best option is. I would be glad to answer any questions that you guys have regarding this whole situation in the comments section below. Um, one other thing that I did wanna also bring up is the possibility of the Panthers actually going out there and signing some veteran wide receivers. I've heard some rumblings from different experts and, and different people within the Carolina Panthers media group that they've kind of been 
considering looking at a Reggie Wayne or a Wes Welker after all of this situation has kind of unfolded. Obviously, Wes Welker and Reggie Wayne, different type of receivers, but both veteran presences that could bring, bring, bring some consistency to a group of wide receivers that I think is going to be pretty inconsistent this season. So just something to think about, keep your eye on. Thank you guys again so much for all the support on this channel. I hope that you guys are enjoying the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. If you are, please be sure to hit the like button below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new as well. I would greatly appreciate it, guys. It helps us grow. And leave your comments below as well. I'll try to get to those as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much. Good luck, and I'll talk to you guys next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.